Welcome to this video, I'm Ingo from Roast Rebels and today I will talk about how to develop a roast profile. I often hear from many of you that you're kind of overwhelmed by all the information or before doing a first roast, you don't know where to start or how to develop your profile, it all looks very difficult, Roasting looks like uh, kind of magic and um, in fact what I can tell you it's not magic, it's not rocket science, it's just a way of preparation, preparing food. Um, you can compare it to baking a cake. If you hadn't learned it at home or if you wouldn't have um, very good books for baking a cake it would look maybe much more magic, even much more magic than roasting a coffee. So. Roasting a coffee is a preparation and if you know the basics, how to roast the coffee, then the chance is very high that you're going to roast a very nice coffee. And in this video, I will introduce you to those basics. I will give you some like key recommendation on how to roast a coffee. Um, of course, you can then uh, go much deeper in detail on each aspect and we will do follow-up videos, especially for, for special aspects of this of these um, recommendations that I'm going to give you. Um, don't forget, I mean, there are even um, world championships in roasting, but don't be overwhelmed. Um, you don't have to be a roasting world champion now. Just start with it and you're going to have a very nice, fresh, good coffee. So I will divide this video in two portions. In the first, I will talk about three aspects that are important when you roast coffee and then we will go through the different stages of coffee roasting and I will just give you some recommendations or like the points where you have to take your decisions in order to develop your roast profile. But what's important in roasting, so these, these three aspects are first like um, um, a consistency in your roast um, all over the bean and from inside to the outside. If your coffee is evenly roasted on all sides and from inside to the outside, then the chance is very high that you're going to have a nice roasted coffee. In the worst case, um, the coffee is still green and underdeveloped in the inside, which will give it a grassy taste and burned on the outside, which will give you a kind of charcoal taste. Um, so this is the worst case and this um, we are going to try to prevent by following the recommendation that I will give you further in this video. And here actually you have to take into consideration that um, it will make a big difference if you roast with a roasting machine that is really um, constructed for this, that is um, evenly turning, that has a mix of airflow and uh, like convective and conductive heat transfer. Or, uh, on the other hand, if you're having a homemade um, alternative roasting method, so there it's uh, always a bit more difficult to really reach this even roast of the bean. I will for sure do some other videos where I will go a bit um, into these alternative roasting uh, methods and give you some recommendation on how, what you could do there to reach an even roast as well. But just for you to know if you change or if you're using a roasting machine that's really constructed for roasting coffee, then the chance is much higher that you're going to get an even roast. The second aspect is not technical, this is really a sensorical or a personal aspect. Um, it's the decision of your bean, of the green coffee that you choose and the roast profile, um, mostly also the roast degree that you're using for this bean. I mean, if you're working on the roast profile, so the most um, important, um, the most important aspect for the flavor of your coffee when it comes to the roast profile is the roast degree that you choose. And here it's really recommended that you are aware uh, that you take care of all the coffees that you're drinking. If you're drinking a bought coffee, um, for example, from a small roaster, most of the small roaster give you information about where the coffee is coming from, what kind of beans it is, how it has been prepared. I will also do videos on that to get a better understanding on how this can influence the um, taste of your coffee. You can also find a lot of 
information about that online, but just to know the choice of your bean has a big impact on the taste of your coffee and then also the degree of roast has a, has a high um, in impact of your, of, the, of your flavor of your coffee. And to make it a bit more clear maybe so, if you're looking for a typical Italian coffee, a typical Italian espresso, um, you maybe like a coffee that has some chocolatey, nutty aspects, that is sweet, that has a full mouthfeel, and most probably you're looking also for a coffee that has low acidity, that is not so sour as other coffees. And here, for example, if you choose the wrong bean for this, if you're choosing, for example, a beautiful Ethiopian Yerga Chefe, which is a beautiful filter coffee, but if you're choosing this bean for a filter, uh, for, a, for an espresso roast, then you will struggle most probably, because this bean has, from nature, a very high acidity in it. It's quite sour, it's fruity, sweet, but acidic as well. And um, to roast this acidic taste out of the bean, you would have to go so dark, so this also for, for information, the darker the go, the less acidic the coffee is, so you would have to go so dark that the coffee is losing on body and sweetness and um, actually would you would kind of dead roast your bean. But if you choose, on the other hand, the right bean for a coffee like this, which could be a yellow bourbon from Brazil, which could be an Indian bean, which could be a bean from Indonesia, for example, or also Canephora, like a Robusta bean, or even a Monsoon Malabar. Um, these are all coffees that are low acidic from nature. And this means I don't have to roast the coffee too dark to bring out the acidity. So you can go, for example, to a second crack, and if you're roasting to this full city plus, if you're roasting to the beginning of second crack, then you will still have um, full, um, full mouthfeel. You will have, still have some body in the coffee, some sweetness in it. And uh, you will actually then reach this, this, this profile that you're going to look for. And the third aspect is the prevention of roast defects. So the most common roast defects are burning your coffee bean and um, typically are uh, scorching. This you can see when you have little um, black dots, like uh, parts that have been split off of your bean and are really black. This is scorching. Or on the other hand, tipping. Tipping you can see it's a bit more difficult to see than scorching, but still you can see it. These are like uh, black ends of your bean. Um, these are most common um, roast profiles when it comes to burning the bean and this will just have a very unpleasant burned flavor in your coffee even if you have a light roast. Then uh, another roast effect is underdeveloped coffee. So coffee which is still green in the taste, grassy in the taste. And then a third very common roast um, defect is the so-called baking. So if the coffee is not roasted but baked, when the roasting process is taking too long, the roast um, is not getting really with the right momentum through the first crack, then you will have a taste which is a bit like cardboard, unpleasant, and this is so-called um, baked coffee which you have to prevent. So we had these three aspects, um, roasting evenly the bean, then choosing the right roast the right bean at the row, right degree of roast and the prevention of roast effects. And how you will do this, um, um, I will explain you now when we go through the different stages of a roast. So the first thing is the um, preparation of your roast. You have to choose how much coffee you load into your, into your roaster. And the amount of coffee, of green coffee, that you will put in your roaster will have an influence on the roast profile and also on the taste of your coffee. So if you're really working on roast profiles and develop roast profiles, then I really recommend you to always choose the same amount of beans that you're putting in your roaster. And in best case, also the same temperature of, of beans that you're putting in your roaster. So store your beans in a place where they're like... Um, um, consistent in temperature so that you're not going to have one spins that are maybe like 8 degrees Celsius and then and the other time some beans that are like 25, 27 degrees Celsius. So um, 
Most roasters give you a recommendation on the capacity of the roaster. So for example, for a hot top roaster, it's 100 to 300 grams of coffee. And you can stay within this, this reach of, of amount of coffee. And you put too much coffee in your roaster. So when you're overloading it, then um, there is a high risk that you're going to bake your coffee because roasting is just going to take too long. And on the other hand, if you're not putting enough beans in your coffee, then you have a risk of burning the coffee, you have a risk of this scorching and tipping of the coffee. So stay within this range and um, also be consistent in the amount of coffee that you load in your, in your roaster. And the second thing then is the choice of the right start temperature. And maybe here also something to tell. Um, I have some people who came to me and said, well, I um, preheated my hot top roaster for 10 minutes with 180 degrees Celsius. Um, and what I can tell you here, you don't have to do this. Maybe you learn it in other videos when it comes to professional roasting or like to, to production roasting. Um, but it's a big difference if you have this small home roasting machine or a big production roaster. For the big production roaster, there's so much steel around the machine that it really takes quite some time to heat the roaster up. So in production roasting, it's very common that the first or even the first um, few roasts of a day have a different roast profile than the other ones just because the roaster isn't hot yet. This isn't really an issue for the home roasting machines which are quite small and which have much less mass that have to be preheated. So here you can really start Go to your start temperature and then put in the bean and start the roast. And when it comes to the start temperature, then you also have to show, choose a temperature that is not too high and not too low. If your temperature is too high, then you have a risk of burning the, the beans. If your temperature is too low, then you have a risk that you're not too, that you're not quick enough with the roast and that you're losing the momentum, which will lead to this baked coffee. So choose the right start temperature and then when you're working on profiles I really recommend you to try different start temperatures. Do the same profile in your roast um, just with different start temperatures. Try this and then cup the coffee one after um, the other to find the, the perfect starting temperature for your coffee. And then after this loading of the coffee, um, there is the, the phase where you heat the, the beans. And um, when it comes to heat transfer to the beans, you have to be aware that there are two phases in the coffee roasting. So one is the, the phase which is um, starting with loading the beans and then ending with the first crack. And here the beans are endothermic. This means they're just taking up heat um, again and again and um, they're taking up a lot of heat. So you have to, to give energy by putting the burner high or the heating element high. But then when, it, when you come to first crack, something is changing in the bean and that they're starting to be exothermic. So this means the beans are even themselves releasing temperature or heat. And if you don't control the roast at that stage, if you just burn with the same heat um, on, then the coffee will be uncontrolled, it will be burned, it will be roasted too fast. So at first crack you always have to reduce the heat in your roasting process. And now um, a very important aspect on how much you should reduce the temperature there. So if you think of these two stages, so the stage one is from putting the bean into the roaster until first crack and the beginning of the first crack. And then the second phase is the development phase, which starts with first crack and ends um, at the end of the roast. So the first part has to be about 80% of the time of your roast and the second part about 20%. This is not like precise. Um, this is not, has to be taken too precise, but it's just um, something that will help you if you're taking this into consideration. It can be at the end 15 to 25 percent, something like this, but just be aware that it's more or less 20 percent the development phase 
versus 80% the phase to the first crack. And this means if you're making a lighter roast, then you have to reduce the temperature at the first crack much more because then you will slow down the roast process because in the same amount of time um, you will reach a lower end temperature while if you're doing for example an espresso roast, a darker roast, then you will keep up the burner a bit more at the first crack because you want to have a faster development phase and end at a higher temperature or a darker roast um, in the same amount of time. So this has to be taken into consideration. And then if you want to play around with the heat um, transfer a little bit more, you can um, divide the first phase also in, um, in that, that you're um, defining a drying point. So this is actually more or less the time where um, the beans are getting from hay yellow to um, peanut brown and you can set a timer there and then play around with the amount of temperature you're giving in the first phase from filling the roaster to this point and in the second phase from this point to the end of the roast. What I um, often do is I prolong the roast time a little bit at this um, drying point. So maybe for a minute I go down with the burner to 50%, prolong it a little bit. This will often pronounce the sweetness in the coffee much more. But then I will uh, put up the heater again to, to, full, um, to full power because I want to go with enough momentum through the first crack in order to prevent this baked taste. Mm. Just um, to be clear on how to define the first crack, first crack is not when you have the first few pops in your coffee, but when the popping is regularly. So if you have, for example, three pops, da -da -da, then you define the first crack. And then another aspect is the airflow. So the definition of air that you're giving in the roaster and the airflow has two um, functions. So one is really like putting out steam and smoke out of your roast. In the first phase, it will have some steam because the coffee is dried. And then around first crack, there will be a lot of smoke and you want to take this out of the roaster. But the airflow also um, has an influence on the taste of your coffee. So the amount of, you can think in it like a mixture of convective and conductive heat transfer. And um, if you in influence this, it will also influence the taste of your coffee. It's a bit difficult to find some concrete and clear information on this. Um, but what I can give you just like um, as a starting point is if you're having more airflow during the roast, then you will usually have a clearer, more complex coffee. So if you're more going for third wave coffees, then you like to roast a bit more airflow. If you prefer a bit this classical, more like nutty, chocolatey taste, then you usually go with a bit less airflow. And then um, when the roast is ended, at the end point, you um, put out the beans of your roaster and you have to cool them um, within four or five minutes, better four minutes to room temperature, and then the roast is finished. So this is it. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to know more about roasting, then also follow our channel. We will publish some more videos and also go into some aspects a bit more deeply on what I talked about in this video. And I always look forward to hearing from you. If you have any more questions, you find my contact on roasttravels.com.